Hey everybody, this is TJR. Rolling Stone Online recently published an article entitled How Music Copyright Lawsuits Are Scaring Away New Hits. Now this article was written by Amy X. Wang and this article explores the current climate of fear and paranoia that both songwriters, artists, music publishing, and record labels are starting to experience in the wake of the recent Blurred Lines and Dark Horse lawsuits. Now, I want to read a little section of the article here. There is a lot of confusion about what's permissible and what's not, says Sandy Wilbur, a forensic musicologist who served as an expert witness for the defense in the Blurred Lines case. Because cases are decided by the average listener who is not an educated musicologist or musician. She notes, labels are very afraid. Since that game-changing ruling in 2015, Wilbur says she's received triple the number of requests from music companies to double-check new songs before they are even considered for release. Now, traditionally speaking, copyright laws regarding songs have always been defined by lyrics and melodies. Now, within that definition, there has always been room for nuance and interpretation, but on a basic level, if the lyrics and or melody of a song or both sound too close to each other, it could potentially constitute a copyright lawsuit. I want to add that over the decades of popular music, there have been plenty of songs with similar melodies and similar lyrics, but nobody cared enough to bother with a lawsuit. Now, the article goes on to state, the Blurred Lines case raised the stakes by suggesting that the far more abstract qualities of rhythm, tempo, and even the general feel of a song are also eligible for protection, and thus that a song can be sued for feeling like an earlier one. And this is true. Everyone went on and on about the Led Zeppelin spirit lawsuit and how it was going to set a dangerous precedent. But it was the Blurred Lines lawsuit that was deeply troubling because it basically stated that you could copyright the groove or the mood of a song. The article then goes on to state that some record labels and publishers are encouraging songwriters to purchase errors and omissions insurance, which protects creative professionals from legal challenges to their intellectual property. Songwriters and artists are naturally keeping quiet about whether they have this kind of insurance since the knowledge of this could also encourage a lawsuit as well. Now, later in this article, there is a paragraph that I feel expresses something that not enough people writing about music are talking about. And this is a quote from Ross Gulen, a producer and songwriter who has released songs with stars like Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. And he goes on to state, the popularity of cheap music production software, which offers the same features to every user, has added another layer of risk. Music is now more similar than it is different for the first time, Golan says. People are using the same sample packs, the same plugins, because it's efficient. Then there's the issue of the infinite number of notes, chord progressions, and melodies. Or as Sandy Wilbur puts it, there are no virgin births in music. Music comes out of other music. Now, it's true that over the decades of popular music, we are all inspired by each other. But in the rock eras of past, before we started using recording software to create music, any musician, any music artist, any band worth their salt strived as hard as possible to be as creatively original as possible as a matter of personal pride, if nothing else. Now, I'm not saying that you can't be creatively original using recording software and sample packs, but it becomes instantly harder when everybody is using the same sample packs the same beats per minute, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And before anybody suddenly writes angrily in the comments, we all need to stop using computers and start using real musicians, and I definitely agree we need to start using real musicians more and more, recording software is not the enemy. It's how you use it. So if more lawsuits do happen and become more frequent, which is a definite possibility, here is what I think will happen. Things will get a lot darker for music, for popular music, for the music industry, for songwriters, for recording artists. But if this becomes too frequent, 
you might start to see a serious backlash from the general public, and the courts might start to throw more of these lawsuits out the window. And they may even begin to create stronger definitions for what constitutes a music copyright lawsuit in order to cut down on the frivolous ones. And yes, some of you are probably cheering for that, but there are downsides to that as well. But that's another discussion for another day. Now, there is one possible good that could occur as a result of all of this. The music industry as a whole might start putting more of their promotional muscle behind songwriters and artists who are more original sounding, who strive to be more original sounding versus those that sound like everybody else. And currently right now, our music industry prefers to prop up and exalt artists who sound like everybody else versus those who sound completely different. These are the ones that get all the radio airplay and I largely blame radio for this, but once again, that's another topic. But getting back to my point, the music industry will start to put more of their promotional muscle and basically put more of their money behind artists who strive to be as original as possible. And personally, I think it's just easier to be more original when music creation is being handled by musicians, songwriters, and producers who use or mostly use real instruments versus those who only use or mostly use computers and samples. I'm not saying you can't be creative using samples because you can be, but the pendulum has for too long shifted towards promoting and propping up music that is created with software versus real instruments and human intuition. This is TJR, those are my thoughts. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments. As always, if you want to support this channel, please consider becoming a patron supporter. If you can't become a patron supporter, you can show your support by clicking like, clicking subscribe, and smashing the bell notification icon so you can know when I release new videos. Everybody, thanks so much for watching. Take care. Looking forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.